And sorry about the, the glare. We're getting nice fall morning sun here in the Pacific Northwest and it's very, very low. That's why we have our sunglasses on. That's why we have our sunglasses on because we're like, ah, oh, what is that bright thing in the sky? Ah. Last time on Proteus Rising, we said goodbye to Poultryville and we left you with an all out geek out regarding a Bayfield 36 that we were on our way to see. This episode, watch us fall in love. So we're almost there. Traffic and has been bad. Traffic has been bad. That's a good thing about going on a Sunday. Yeah. But we're talking about where we want to go and I can't think that there's really anywhere we don't want to go. <laughs> Straight up Hormuz is not on the top of my list. Well, no, but it would be really cool if we made it there. Um, I want to also go up the coast of Western Europe and go in through some of the rivers. I'm hoping that whatever vessel we end up with, we can do. Wouldn't that be cool? That would go be down amazing. the Rhine and the Danube, Rhine, and yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, how far can you sail up the Thames? I don't know. It's a thing we're going to have to investigate. Anybody out there knows these answers to these questions, leave a comment because we're curious. If you've already done the research or you've actually already done it, let us know. We're done looking at Naughty Gal. Yeah, uh, really impressive boat. Very, very pretty, uh, really well maintained. Uh, there's a lot of projects that are partway done, but it doesn't have the feel of a guy who's just like, oh yeah, I was gonna do that and I'm halfway done with it. That's not that's not what I see there. I mean, no. there, there's evidence that the project they're working on, they finish. Placing all the port lights and their um, all the hatches, the, the hatches, yeah, the boat's in really, really good shape. I couldn't find any soft spots in the deck, no dead spots. Love the way it's constructed. So mm -hmm. the factory, the design decisions that the factory made are solid decisions. She's a little bit more expensive than some of the other boats that we've looked at, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the 36 foot length. Mm -hmm. But she's got a lot more going on inside than any other 36 foot boat we've looked and at. And it already has wind generation and solar power oh, and that's right, yeah. a Dodger and a Bimini and dinghy davits and all kinds of extras that are nice to haves but weren't on our have to have. So yeah. Now we're gonna go here in Anacortes to the Brown Lantern and have a beer and get our notebook out and make some more notes and be hearing back from us because we're gonna have more questions. Yeah. Which is a good sign because when we have more questions, that means we're still interested, yes? So we just left the Brown Lantern in Anacortes, Washington. Uh, great place. The uh, oyster shooters are awesome. Oh yeah, that's really good. The clam chowder was awesome. The fish tacos were real good. And we sat down by the hot sauce shelf. So we got to interact with a bunch of people because they were all coming to get the hot shop sauces. And we, uh, while we were waiting for our food, we tried a bunch of them. So when the people came up to the hot sauce shelf, we were like, what do you like? Because we just tried them all. <laughs> So thanks very much for that. We appreciate it. If you're in Anacortes, go to the Brown Lantern. It was awesome. It was so hard to stop thinking about everything this Bayfield 36 had to offer. We had so many conversations about her. But first, there was some football to experience. <laughs>
And as the clock rolls down, that'll be the end of the game. Look at the score. 35, 34. Outside wins. Lose. Good night. See, I'm accepted and essential. <laughs> All right! Really? Yeah. What? What's it say? <laughs> <laughs> All right! Your first acceptance letter! Way to go, kiddo! Yeah. It's a great pleasure that I offer you admission for fall 2018. Congratulations, you're now a wildcat. <laughs> We're coming here and being full of you. Sweet. That's really cool. We we'll look forward to working with you to achieve your academic goals and to have you join us on campus. Nice. As we entered November, there were some hard decisions to make. In our minds, the Bayfield 36 was the one. But would the timing work? Hmm. Our plan to pay for her hit some snags. Yeah, so uh, I like the rigging. There is the, uh, the issue of the paint. Okay, they just did all the bottom paint, but the rest of the hull of the boat is really uh, oxidized. Well, that's general maintenance in my book. Yeah, well, you it's have just... to do that like every season or every other season. Yeah. You need to do a quick scan because it's 1853. Yeah, five you need to do a quick scan and see so, if there's a double check that there's not a killer. Which is, oh, and so the witches were, eh, they, were, they need to be greased, right? I can tell some of them had nice sharp clips. You would have done that. You will You're do right. that regardless of any boat we get. That will be one of the first things that you do. <laughs> I know you. I absolutely know you. Yeah, calling it out. Um, canvas, uh, total unknown quantity. We haven't seen any of the canvas for this yeah. boat. Uh, so but they checked that as part of the survey, though, don't they? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, the survey and the sea trial is going to run it through, run it through its paces. It's definitely a heavy boat. Uh, it's been used, uh, but it hasn't been neglected. It has everything of the have-tos that mm -hmm. we picked, the things that we required for sailability and safety. It has all of those. Yes, absolutely. And, and, it, and, and every one of our, our, our nice to have nice as well, yes. It does. So, here's my concern. He's only got another week to 10 days of maintenance left. At that point, he needs to move it to the long-term storage. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he had made a decision that he was gonna list with the broker and handle the sale because he needs to get on with his life. His life is not his boat anymore. It's their property in Alaska, which is totally cool. We really want the boat. We're mostly comfortable with what they're asking the boat, but uh, our method of financing got jacked around and right. we were expecting to have money in hand the business day after we went and looked at the boat. And that didn't happen because... I'm trying to be kind. Uh, so now everything's delayed and... Part of that was we spent a week hemming and hawing if we still wanted to go about financing our mm, boat this, that's true. in this manner. Yeah. And then we decided, yes, we didn't want to lose out on Naughty Gal because she ticked all the freaking boxes. But now we're up against this time frame. And part of me is very much, screw it, we'll do it. Mm. We'll figure it out as we go. Right. And, oh, don't let the opportunity slip away. Right. And yeah. then the other part of me is like, Hold on. Don't be an idiot. Yeah. You don't know exactly what you're getting with this boat. You were not in a position to say, here's some earnest money, keep it off the market for a month for us, please. Right. Well, except all our money's tied up in this little transaction right now. Right. And because we have a graduating senior. So, All right, so like so, so we so we love the boat. We love the and boat, and we're serious about wanting to make an offer. Yes. Funding has been delayed, and it's outside of our control. And and outside of us being able to commit on it. Right. Because we have learned in our life that until you have it, you don't have it. I am uncomfortable giving them a hundred percent because. 
right now it's out of our hands and we won't know for sure if it's going to be in our hands for three weeks. Can you give us a month? Yeah. You know, especially since they've been really, really cool and want us to have their boat. Like they're, right. I, I, I've, only, true. I've only read or heard about somebody being like, well, it's not just about the money too. I want to make sure that mm -hmm. our girl gets in the right hands. So that would be what they would have to agree to is that at the end of three weeks, if shit goes sideways, we got nothing for them. We got, you're right. So, but if it does it, but if everything goes as planned, then yeah, we'll give you an offer. That offer is still going to be contingent on the survey. Yeah. So that's the thing is there's a lot of maybes and ifs mm, sure, that they so. have to decide upon, and I totally get it if they're like, no, we need to just go list with the broker, and you can take your chance with the broker. And I understand that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't begrudge them that at all. And then we just know that this isn't going to be our boat because the timing is off. Yeah, that's true. If they want to say no, that's not right. And if that's not right and that doesn't work for them, then it's not the right boat for us. Mm -hmm. So and we understand. Yeah. And it'd be sad. Yep. Different purchasing process. It's much. What? It's really hard. Then buying a car. Yeah. Well. Buying a more home. emotional investment in the decision. All right, we're yeah. gonna make this call. Okay. Gotcha. Stay tuned for the next episode to find out the result of that crucial phone call. In the meantime, Billy wants you to rock those like and subscribe buttons. Cole and Sprite want to remind you to comment and ring the bell. And check out Proteus Rising on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Until then, you ball.